Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and today I'm going to talk about pyrocumulonimbus clouds. So, mega fires, you know, massive wildfires uh, creating fire nados, um, fire triggered thunderstorms. You know, we're talking about the same thing here pyrocumulonimbus clouds. It's a fairly fairly uh, new phenomena in our era of um, rapid, abrupt uh, global climate change. So basically the updrafts from these very hot burning, intense wildfires builds up enough airflow upward that you get uh, very similar conditions to uh, thunderstorm updrafts. So you can get resulting cumulonimbus uh, storm clouds created, but basically full of ash and smoking embers and things from fires. You, on the ground, you can get tornado-like winds occurring. These uh, spinning vortices will then toss out flaming embers um, across up to a five kilometer or three mile radius that can spark fires beyond the region that where the firefighters are fighting the original fire. These uh, pyrocumulus clouds um, have been found recently to have up volcanic levels of energy. So in other words, they can lift materials like black smoke, carbon and gases, carbon monoxide, H2O, CO2, sulfur dioxide. They can loft these materials up into the stratosphere. So now it's no longer just a local or regional event. It can become a global event because once the materials are up in the stratosphere, they can travel around the planet and um, they can actually remain aloft for, they don't go quite as high as they would from a volcano eruption, putting materials into the stratosphere, but these pyrocumulonimbus clouds, they can loft the stuff into the lower stratosphere and it's been measured to stay up there as long as uh, eight months and it c can come down, you know, different, you know, ac halfway across the world. So researchers in the Arctic and uh, Greenland have detected suddenly large emissions of materials that are coming back down to earth that have been lofted up and they, they trace the origin to some of these pyrocumulonimbus clouds. In 2017 in BC, there were massive fires, um, and I'll show you some Earth Null School images from those fires. And those fires act, actually, there were there were actually five pyrocumulonimbus um, clouds that were formed from those fires, and then another one occurred about the same time in Washington State. So, one of these events, you know, is not enough perhaps to put that much material up into the stratosphere. But when you get five consecutive events happening basically simultaneously, and then another one close by, you can really get uh, volcanic levels of, of energy. So, so let me get right into the presentation and show you um, what I'm talking about here. Okay, so this site here uh, well, before I get into the details here, um, this is my Twitter feed, so um, I'll, I'll put links to this video, and uh, this is a great article on pyro storms um, from the Narwhale, which I've posted um, on Twitter. Um, this is leading to, you know, people in Canada and Western Canada are concerned about these fires from all well, last summer. It was very dark in places and a lot of air pollution. So they're buying air purification systems. They're trying to make clean rooms in their house where they basically block all the windows and doors and have air purification systems so that if there's, you know, fire events that, uh, you know, are ongoing in the summer, they have a place to go where they can breathe healthy air. Um, Soon I'll talk about the stalling of the jet streams. Um, this paper came out and this of course affects atmospheric flows and where the smoke from the wildfires will go. Also the El Nino is having an impact and I'll talk about the changes of El Nino with abrupt climate change soon. 
And uh, recently I've been talking about Ottawa a bit. We've had two major floods since 2017 and we had tornadoes last fall. So the city is finally looking at how to, you know, react to these type of events because we're not uh, doing a good job. Okay, so uh, just go to Paul um, a, at Paul H. Beckwith and please follow my Twitter feed and I'll follow you back and um, we'll, we'll uh, you know, we can get a lot of transfer of information on these events back and forth. Now, this video here is very visceral, but I do want to show it. Um, it's showing, okay, this, these are firemen fighting a fire. Their fire hose got stuck and sucked up by a fire nato, a whirl, and they were fighting it. It was, it was up in the sky. It was like they were flying a kite with their fire hose. It's absurd. There you can see a small whirl there, um, like a small fire nato, you know, and these things can come in, you know, they can be very small like this one in diameter, or they can get extremely large. So this, I believe, was uh, in 2018. Okay, you can just Google the, the fire, firefighter's hose pulled into fire whirl in Canada and get, um, get information on that. So let me uh, hit escape to get out of there. Okay, this was posted uh, September 2018. Okay, I gotta, sh I gotta stop it. Okay, so back to um, back to what are these pyrocumulonimbus clouds? This is from Wildfire Today. Okay, basically you get the wildfire, right? Very hot air with all the embers and ash and smoke rising. You get these very very strong updrafts. A plume of hot turbulent air and smoke rises. Then the turbulent air mixes with colder air as you go up the air temperature drops, so it mixes with colder air, um, causing it to broaden out and cool as it rises. When the plume rises high enough, the air, it cools even more and you get a cloud forming. Don't forget that there's a lot of water vapor in uh, organic material and that, there's a lot of water in trees. And, and when, when, it's, when the fire occurs and the high heat, it's all vaporized, of course. You have a lot of water vapor rising up in these plumes. So you get the cloud formed here. And uh, in an unstable atmosphere, so if the cape con convective available potential energy is high, an actual thunderstorm can form. Um, and thus, you know, and then, and then it has basically the anvil shape up near the top of the troposphere. Um, some of it, you know, because of the immense heat, some of it actually still rises up into the stratosphere. Um, you can get, uh, basically, rain in the cloud evaporates and cools when it comes in contact with dry air. That cool air can descend quickly, creating a, a local downburst, which will then, which can sort of, you know, knock down a whole bunch of trees, for example. It, can, it just seems to come out of nowhere and uh, there's a circular radial pattern of damage. So all the trees knocked down would be pointing away from some center, and it can be identified thus as a downburst as opposed to the damage from an actual tornado. Um, you can also, you know, like any other thunderstorm, you can get lightning produced, triggered, and that can ignite new fires. Okay, so in the Fort McMurray fire, lightning from the pyrocumulonimbus cloud ignited fires about 22 miles away from the original fire. Okay, so, so this is, keep this in mind, and you can also, from, like, from, it, from any other strong storm system, you can get tornadoes uh, generated. The local, locally very strong convective uplift here can cause these whirls which, which sucked up the fire hose like I showed in, in, the, in the video. Okay, so the article in the Narwhal, Narwhal is excellent about pyro storms. I highly recommend that you search for it, find it, and read it yourself. So tornado-like winds, these pyro storms can create tornado-like winds on the ground that can cast flaming embers across a five-kilometer radius away from the actual original fire. 
volcanic levels of energy big enough to loft um, materials from the fire up into the lower stratosphere would be where they become global events as opposed to just regional events. So these massive hot burning fires are creating these fire induced thunderstorms that are a new part of our wildfire reality. So how do you fight these? And uh, okay, so this is an example of an of, of a, an incredible, incredibly dangerous event involving actually five pyrocumulonimbus um, clouds, storms were created from this one fire, and then another one was created in Washington State. And I think uh, that may be the record so far. So August 12, 2017, heat and smoke from an intense wildfire in BC started mushrooming upward, sucking up ash, blazing wood and vegetation, water vapor from lakes and streams. Okay, this was in, um, these things have only been studied coll collaboratively since about 2013. Technically, they're pyrocubulonimbus clouds or pyro CBs, CBS. Okay, so basically in BC in this event, there were five of these fire driven thunderstorms that were created. And the noxious gases that they spent that they sent up into the atmosphere were eventually detected as far north as north of the North Pole. And locally, they touched off more fires. Washington State generated its own pyro CB, so that's five in BC, one in Washington State at about the same time. This is some of the images um, from a pyrocumulonimbus cloud. This is a willow fire near Pace in Arizona in 2014, and you can just see the massive size of it. Going back to BC, that event, that, that cluster of these pyrocumulonimbus clouds, you know, five in BC and one in Washington State, it surpassed even the events of Black Saturday in Australia in 2009. In that case, in Australia, there were three of these storms that erupted. 173 people killed, 414 injured, and it burned 1,700 square miles. It was called Black Sunday in Australia. Another pyro CB event occurred in May 2016 during in Alberta. The wildfires in Alberta evacuated 88,000 people in the Tar Sands community of Fort McMurray. A pyro CB formed over that fire, lightning from the firestorm. Okay, remember this image here? Okay, lightning from the firestorm ignited um, several new fires 22 miles northeast of the fire front. They'd never, wildfire experts had never seen this before. Okay, uh, the world is warming. It's causing more frequent and more intense wildfires. So these um, fire-driven thunderstorm events are on the rise in places including Texas, Portugal, South Africa, Argentina, and other places where they've never occurred before. And how do you put out these fires? You know, fire suppression strategies have to change because, uh, you know, the, the embers can be spread far miles and miles and miles away from the fire. This is the, this is the classic case here. Again, compare it to this, okay? So this is the Fort McMurray fire during the May 2016 wildfires. So you can see the, all the ingredients here of this pyrocumulonimbus uh, event. So winds can reach the speed of a tornado. Embers shoot in all directions up to three miles or five kilometers. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, these things are, are being studied. They're complex. They're puzzling meteorologists and atmospheric scientists. But what we do get, what, what is known is that we get superheated updrafts from an intense fire. It sucks smoke, ash, burning materials, and water vapor high into the sky. These elements cool and form fire clouds that look and act like classic thunderstorms. The heat can trigger... You know, the heat can actually stop the cloud from raining, and this is a problem because the cloud's still generating lightning. Um, so that can create lots more fires. So I'll continue this video. Thanks.